Alright guys, well it is a cool crisp 48 degrees, 48 degrees here in, uh, <laughs> in May. It is a midwinter day in early May here at Bugs in a Jar Farm in New York, baby. Good God, 48 degrees and I guess it will be raining until 2025. But it is now uh, Friday, May 10th, 2024, and uh, you get to enjoy the view through the screen of Hummingbird Tiny House, because uh, on top of everything else going on in my life, I have no laptop computer, and I can't set up a camera and be able to read so you can just look at the gloomy scenery out of the back window of Hummingbird. Well, uh, we get into, well, since it is a Friday, uh, get into our weekly Ain't Gonna Happen roundup rant where I just simply went on the mainstream media to pull a few plums out. I guess we have one medium.com story, but... Uh, Let's just start here, right here on Yahoo News. New poll uncovers what nearly 70%, nearly 70% of Americans believe the U.S. should do immediately. What? What? 70 of Americans believe the U.S. should do immediately to curb rising temperatures well, what they should do is move to New York. And I assure you, you will curb any rising temperature by moving to New York in May. Quote, there is a sense of urgency. So what exactly is it that nearly 70% of Americans believe the U.S. should do immediately to curb rising temperatures? All right. A new CBS News and YouGov poll shows a strong majority of Americans support taking steps to combat the causes behind increasing global temperatures as many want action to start immediately. Yes, <coughs> the results reflect a nation increasingly aware of the impacts of a changing climate on their lives and communities. The survey of over 2,200 U.S. adults found that 52%, 52% think we need to address climate change right now, with another 17% saying we should act in the next few years. Just 20% said we should not address climate change at all. That would probably be anyone living in Ithaca, New York. Uh, so, 76% uh, of 18 to 29 year olds, 79% of 30 to 44 year olds uh, support the U.S. taking steps to reduce climate change these old farts like me, 58% are in favor. 74% uh, of Democrats, only 29% of Republicans uh, believe we need to act now. Yes. Um, there's the sense that we should address climate change. And there's also some, some belief that we can. Yes, Americans are looking for solutions they can implement in their own lives to save money while helping the environment. Yes, the shifting tides of public opinion suggest the nation may be ready to unite behind climate action. So there's <coughs> just one problem with this story in case you missed it about 
this poll uncovering what nearly 70% of Americans say we should do immediately to curb rising temperatures is nowhere in the article. Nowhere in the article does it mention one thing that anybody can do from an individual level right up to the planet saving Joe Biden. Nowhere in this article do you see one mention of what anybody can do about it because it ain't going to happen. Uh, okay, let's, uh, let's see. All right. The world's largest vacuum to suck climate pollution out of the air just opened. Yes, the world's largest plant designed to suck planet-eating pollution out of the atmosphere like a giant vacuum cleaner began operating in Iceland on Wednesday. Mammoth, Mammoth is the second commercial direct air capture plant opened by Swiss company Climeworks in the country and is 10 times bigger than its predecessor Orca, which started running in 2021. Uh-huh, yes. Direct air capture is a technology designed to suck in air and strip out the carbon using chemicals. The carbon then can be injected deep beneath the ground, reused, usually in oil wells, or transformed into solid products. Uh, so they plan to stuff it underground and turn it to stone. Yes. Um... Blah, blah, blah. Uh, but carbon removal technologies such as direct air capture are controversial. They have been criticized as expensive, energy hungry, and if anybody does not know what this means, unproven at scale. Some climate advocates are also concerned they could distract from policies to cut fossil fuels. This is L Lily Fuhr, director of the Fossil Economy Program at the Center for International Environmental Law, said the technology, quote, is fraught with uncertainties and ecological risks. Yes. Uh, so what's going on? Mammoth will be able to pull 36,000 tons of carbon from the atmosphere each year when it's running at full capacity. That's equivalent to taking around 7,800 gas-sucking cars off the road for a year. I think last I heard there were one and a half billion uh, cars on the road. <clears throat> Climeworks did not give an exact cost for each ton of carbon removed, but said it was closer to $1,000 a ton than $100 a ton, the latter of which is widely seen as a key threshold for making the technology affordable and viable. As the company scales up the size of its plants and brings costs down, the aim is to reach $300 and $350 a ton by 2030 before hitting $100 a ton around the year 2050. Uh, but, uh... While uh, we're waiting for that to happen, we do have a backup plan. This one is from some clueless moron on uh, medium.com. Never heard of this uh, uh, apocalyptimist, this collapse denier named Dr. Erlen Van Gnuchen. 
how coconut waste can help us tackle climate change. Turning coconut leftovers into biofuels as a replacement for fossil fuels. Yes, I, apparently Dr. Erlen, uh, she has never heard of the very concept of at scale. <laughs> Coconut leftovers. You know, when I sit here and, and read this shit, I, you know, being a doomer, after enough years of this bullshit, just wondering, is there anybody on this planet swallowing any of this unadulterated horseshit? Uh, God, there is, uh, I, I lost this essay in medium.com in the shuffle. I really wanted to share a quote about it, uh, about it, about apocalyptimism, uh, you know, talking about how, how people, when, when something is clearly unsolvable, when we are, when you're in a predicament, an unsolvable predicament, that, that people are, are, are just so desperate for somebody to come along and, and, and think of something that it doesn't make any difference how ridiculous the solution is that that's being promoted. Uh, sucking this shit out of the air, uh, turning coconut husks is it, it, going to uh, replace a hundred million barrels uh, of oil per day on this planet. It, you know, that they're so desperate that they just latch on to, to anything being promoted as a solution. When anybody with a fucking brain takes 20 seconds and, and, and to look at this shit and say it ain't gonna happen. All right, bad news. Uh, more bad news for Elon Musk. <laughs> Tesla's, quote, apocalypse-proof cyber truck thwarted by sand, snow, and regulator recalls. Yes, Tesla's cyber truck does not appear as apocalypse proof as Elon Musk first said it would. Yes, since its November debut, the vehicle has gotten stuck in rough terrain and is facing recalls uh, when the $60,000 car was first revealed, its windows were smashed during a live demonstration. Yes. Uh... <laughs> this was uh, th 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 this was Elon Musk uh, quote from November, quote, if you are ever in an argument with another car, you will win. The apocalypse could come along at any moment. And here at Tesla, we have the finest in apocalypse technology, close quote. Yes. But on May 2nd, a tourist on Nantucket found their cyber truck trapped in the sand, requiring a tow truck to free it. There you go. <laughs> uh, anyway, enough of Elon Musk. Um... Uh, so what is going on in the in the limp dick lefty capital city of Berkeley, California? You know the the save the planet uh, city of Berkeley. What's going on with them? City abruptly reverses its landmark decision to ban natural gas hookups. 
we have ceased enforcement. The city of Berkeley, California is repealing its landmark ban on natural gas hookups and new buildings. The first of its kind ordinance passed in 2019 is being scrapped after a legal challenge from the California Restaurant Association. The groundbreaking law thrust Berkeley into the national spotlight and inspired over 140 other cities to phase out gas in new homes and buildings. However, those efforts now face an uncertain future amid pushback from the gas industry, restaurants, and builders. Yes. We have, this is one of these uh, bureaucrats, these lefty bureaucrats, quote, we have ceased enforcement of the gas ban that Berkeley will continue to be a leader on climate action. There you go. Uh, so what can you do to help? What can you do to help consider upgrading your gas appliance to electric appliances? There you go. Um, oh boy. Let's see. From Berkeley to Sub-Saharan Africa. You know, sometimes you read these ain't gonna happen stories and, uh, you know, even for some jaded, uh, crusty old doomer, uh, like childless doomer, uh, like me, uh, I read these things and, uh, and, and, and just, you know, you have to feel sorry. So this is from AP. We're going to go over to, uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. They study next to one of Africa's largest trash dumps. They're planting bamboo to try to cope. And uh, I think I can uh, find uh, some pictures of... Okay, so since I don't have a, a laptop, so I, I want you to, to look, so look at this photo. So here is the school. This is the school. And here is one little corner of the the uh, the trash dump. So imagine being a kid in this school uh, and having this next door to you. This is one the, you know th this is one garbage dump uh, in one city in sub-saharan Africa. you know where you're always hearing about sub-saharan Africa, are doing nothing. It's not their fault uh, that the planet is uh, in the shape it's in. But uh, these kids are uh, are taking matters in into their own hands by planting bamboo, armed with gardening hose, while others cradled bamboo seedlings. Students gathered outside their school in Kenya's capital, Nairobi. They hoped the fully grown bamboo would help to filter the filthy air from one of Africa's largest trash dumps next door. There you go. More than 100 bamboo plants. More than 100 bamboo plants dot the ground around Dandora High School, which shares a name with the dump site that was declared full 23 years ago. Hundreds of trucks still drive in daily to dump more trash, acrid smoke billowing from the burning of garbage 
fills the air every morning, hindering visibility and leaving some students with respiratory issues. Yes. But uh, anyway, it is bamboo to the rescue. Yes. So this is the, the school's principal, Eudicus Maina, researched online and came across the idea of bamboo. He believes it will reduce the cases of respiratory infections in the community. Yes, the fast-growing bamboo has been promoted by the United Nations. Mm-hmm. Uh, there you go. Students, <laughs> students, <laughs> students, <laughs> Students, students, the bamboo will help transform the school compound into a green haven in the litter-strewn Dandora neighborhood. Yes, the dump next door to the school occupies about 50 hectares or more than 100 20 acres of land and receives more than 2,000 tons of waste daily from around Nairobi, home to 4 million people. Its stench can be smelled miles away. Yes. Uh... The air is not the school's only challenge. Vultures from the dump are a nuisance at mealtimes when students guard their plates from being snatched. Oh, God. We got 100 bamboo plants to the rescue. But we're going to wind up... Uh, Mars, I, I love it when they ask a question. This is from space.com. Drilling for water ice on Mars. How close are we to making it happen? How close are we to drilling for ice on Mars? Things are looking up. For digging deep on Mars. Progress is palpable on how best to extract subsurface ice to generate drinkable water, rocket fuel, and other resources on the Red Planet. Yes. All right, but don't worry. The company Honeybee Honey Bee Robotics is uh, on the case. Yes. Um, so do they have a timeline? They go on and on and on. Uh, on and on and on and on. And on and on, and they never mention uh, one time anywhere in this story uh, titled, How Close Are We to Making It Happen? And just like the article we started with about the, what, you know, it's 70% of Americans think we need to do immediately to stop climate change never mentioning one thing uh, we need to do other than moving to Ithaca, New York and keeping our damn peckers in our pants and not letting our knickers down. Uh, we will end up with an article, Drilling for Water on Mars, How Close Are We to Making It Happen, that never mentions anywhere in this article how close we are to making it happen.
for the simple reason it ain't gonna happen. Does anybody out there think that that we're gonna be drilling for water ice on Mars? You know, get a fucking life. Buy you a apocalypse-proof Tesla Cybertruck. <sighs> and get ready for the shit show. But anyway, uh, I have the uh, the little dog's uh, dinner cooking. Yes, little dog. Are you ready uh, for your dinner? I have to go feed the dog on this gloomy day. <sighs> Bye, guys.